Since the beginning of time, God has been pursuing mankind. His pursuit is steadfast and unwavering. His love is resolute and unmatched. From the moment of our first breath, we have all been searching for hope. In every human heart, there is a longing for true purpose and meaning. There is a sense that we were meant for more. Our city is filled with people searching for truth, searching for answers. These answers can't be found in quick fixes, self-help books, or our limited ability to understand the meaning of life. Eternity is within us. The kingdom of God isn't a place, it's a people who are pursued by their creator and are found in the midst of their searching. You see, where the pursuit of God and the searching of mankind collide, there is Jesus. My heavenly loving, gracious and mighty Father, wonder working Lord, I thank you and I praise you for the time that you have given each one of us this evening. Lord, as your children, we gather here to hear your voice and the things that you have in store for us. Lord, as you have brought us here, Lord, we also pray and ask your help that you prepare each one of our hearts for the word that you have in store for us as we, as believers in Christ, as we here as a local church, the place that you have kept us, the place that you have, Lord, brought us from a different country, from different backgrounds. Lord, we gather here as a church and we reflect upon what we believe as a church, as individuals, as what your word says. Lord, we pray, pray that you help us understand the truths and also as I stand, Lord, on your behalf, I pray that you be with me, strengthen me and give me utterance that I might be used for your glory. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I submit the rest of the ha uh, things into your hands and we also, Lord, ask for your help through, for this um, presentation and also the mic system and everything that needs to be working accordingly. Lord, we pray that everything works well so that we might be able to focus and hear your voice. We submit all these and here at your feet. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Sorry. So this slide on the screen that you see right now, I want you to pay attention and see if anybody recognizes anything, anybody, any name there that you recognize. You can raise your hand if you know any name there. I didn't know until a few days back. So I, I'll not be surprised. If, I'll be surprised if anybody raises their hands and tells me that they know uh, those uh, names. So the first person that we see is Shoemaker. He is a person in Germany who was put in a coffin, buried, and when they were putting all the mud on him, on his coffin, then somebody noticed that there was a small noise that is coming from inside. And then the person who was putting all the mud had to reverse the process and take out the mud to realize that he was making some movements. And then we, and there was a doctor nearby and then he saw that the body was warm and then he cut open the vein to see if the blood was flowing and because of the way that he cut the vein, he actually died. And the second person that we see is Filmela Jonetra. <coughs> so that person we see is also a similar kind. And the third one, I, I could, we could go uh, each and every uh, person, but the one that, uh, the third one, S.C. Dunbar, she's a woman who was in her late 30s or 40, she was pronounced dead, she was taken to the hospital, she was pronounced dead, she was put in a coffin, and 
because her sister lives in a different state, so they were waiting for one more day so that they could bury her. And then she, her sister could not make it on time, so they actually took her to the burial ground, put her in, and covered her with dirt and all the mud. And while they were almost So while they were almost uh, done with it, her sister arrives. And when her sister arrives, her sister insisted that she at least see her once before uh, she was completely uh, cl uh, closed with the mud. So the person who was putting the mud had to do all the work and take her back, take the mud back. And once they opened the coffin, we hear that that lady who died actually rose up and sit, sat. And then eventually she turned out she lived 47 years after that. And the last person that we see is Andalo Hayes. He were, is an young boy who met with an accident. And his face, he went and his body went and bumped into a hard wall. And his face was so disfigured that the doctors and everybody were not even letting their family members to see him. So he was put in a mortuary. He was uh, uh, put in uh, actually the grave. After three days, there was some insurance issue that came up that they were claiming. And they said that the insurance company asked them to take their body out and do some autopsy or something. And after, when he, they took him out, his body was still not uh, the way it, the dead bodies are, and they found out that he was actually in coma, and then later, then he lived almost 50 years after that. He became an icon in the place that he was living, and he, uh, a lot of people traveled from different places in the world to see him. Why am I? Why are we looking at all these people that were brought to life once assumed dead, and they were brought to life back? Because today, that what we are go going to look at is the thing that what we believe as a church. I want to find Mehul. Okay, Mehul is here. So. Where is the laptop? Okay. Can you change the slide? So here we, this evening, we are trying to see what we believe as a church, as individual believers in Christ, what we believe in, and more importantly, what as a church, at Beloved Church, what we believe as part of this resurrection. This resurrection, what we believe in. We uh, saw the email and there is a statement of faith on the website also that we look at. And what we believe in as a church that we are here, what are the principles that we believe in, what is the word of God, what word of God says, and that was put together. And then what we believe in as a resurrection as a whole is what we are going to look at uh, this evening. So the, the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ that we see is accepted by the Lord as we see that he um, has been physically and literally has been raised from the dead. And because of his physical and literal raising up from the dead and having a physical body, and we see that it was also acceptable in the eyes of the Father. It was acceptable. That's why he was able to accept the atoning sacrifice that Christ has made. And we see that he has been given this glorious body which is which does not age which, which does not have any more pain which is glorious which is imperishable the one that would be forever the way it is so that's what we were looking in the past slide that whoever people that were brought back from dead were the ones which would age eventually which who would go through the pain again they they could get diseases 
they could go through other regular norms in what a physical body will go through. But the one that Jesus Christ has attained through the resurrection is a body that is glorious body. That's what we believe in that it is the glorious body that Jesus Christ has, has received as part of the resurrection. And we also see that it is not a spirit but it's a physical body that Jesus Christ has received. And as we look at the next slide. <coughs> and we see the resurrection of Christ is not a random act. It's, it did not happen randomly. It was just like the birth of Christ was prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years ago uh, by multiple uh, prophets and in different scripture portions that we uh, keep reminding ourselves during uh, Christmas time how it was prophesied, how uh, it was told, foretold uh, before even the birth of Christ. We also see that there are many prophecies that were uh, told about the death of Jesus Christ also. There were many uh, prophecies that we read in different parts of the scripture that Jesus Christ's death was also prophesied. And we, the same fact, if we believe that Jesus Christ was born uh, and according to the prophecies that were done and also he died according to the prophecies, the, the, the Jesus Christ's death was also prophesied. And it, it, it did not happen as an accident. It was foretold. We see in a couple of other portions, uh, in the scripture portions that we see. We'll turn to the next slide. We look at Psalms chapter 16 verse 10. We'll turn our Bibles to Psalms chapter 16 verse 10. So we see that for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. This is a messianic psalm that we see and we see that, that God will not let the body of Christ be corrupt and he will not abandon my soul to Sheol is what we see. We also see uh, as Jesus Christ himself has also told to his disciples before going to the cross. We see that in Matthew chapter 17 verses 22 and 23. Matthew chapter 17 verses 22 and 23. We see as they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the son of man is about to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him and he will be raised on the third day. And they were greatly distressed. This is what we see that when they were talking to, uh, Jesus was talking to the uh, disciples, he tells them clearly that what is going to happen. It is not something that the Roman soldiers and uh, the, the, the people at that time randomly came in and they were planning to plot and kill Jesus. He didn't know that uh, what they were uh, thinking, but he knows what is going to happen. That's what he shares with the disciples that this is what is going to happen, that, <coughs> that they will kill me and he will be raised on the third day. And we see that the, uh, we see that the disciples were greatly uh, depressed uh, hearing what Jesus has to say. Even though they, he has been with them and he's been telling them uh, what is to come, but when the situation came, we see that they were discouraged and depressed. And we see in Matthew chapter 12 verse 38. Teacher, we will see a sign from you. They wanted to see a sign before when he said that they are going to kill me and I am going to be raised on the third day. We see that the disciples were asking, uh, will we see a sign from you? And, we, and the response that we see Jesus Christ has responded to them saying that um, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So he references also we see that 
Jesus has referenced um, the Jonah, the prophet Jonah, while he was uh, uh, explaining about uh, his resurrection. We see Jonah's death, Jonah's burial, and Jonah was raised on the third day. Similarly, he refer refers to the same incident that he would be uh, he would be killed and he would be buried and he would be rising on the third day. And uh, we also see that as we have uh, looked at a couple of uh, um, incidents where in a worldly life that we have seen that uh, people were revived from their death or they were uh, revived from what they were apparently going to die. But we see a couple of uh, incidents within Bible that uh, in the different portions of scriptures that we see that people were dead and they were brought back to life. I think uh, one of the slides that we had was I was uh, mentioning a uh, couple of instances where people were dead and they were revived. One of them we know that uh, Lazarus was one of them. He was dead and he was brought back to life. And we see in other scripture portions that in, in the scripture portions that we see uh, where one of the Sh Shunammite woman's son was also been brought to life by Elisha. We see in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 21, we also see the power that Elisha's body and the bones had. There was one soldier, uh, there was a war going on, and there was a soldier that was uh, put in the grave of Elisha, and we see that the body which was dead comes back to life. And we also see in other portions that, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the Elisha, Elisha raises the son of a Shunammite woman. As, uh, we see that. So all these things are possible. Yes, they were brought back to life by the power of uh, power, what God has given them and what the power the prophets had. But we see that all of them will eventually go back to their natural process of aging, pain and what all the human body has to go through, they will be uh, dead at some point of time. And we also see, uh, just in the case of Lazarus, which is something that we readily recollect when we, when we say that somebody was brought back from the dead, is something that we remember that Lazarus is one of that person that would be uh, readily coming to our mind. Even him eventually would have died. There is, no, there is no evidence that he has lived forever or uh, done anything differently. But we see in scriptures that eventually all those people were put to death. And we, as we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the way that he was resurrected, the way that he uh, has been given a physical body and the power with which he was raised up from the dead. We have enough evidences in the New Testament that uh, talks about um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We see that in Matthew. Uh, we see that in Matthew chapter uh, 28, verses 1 to 20. So we see that. So we see this uh, New Testament evidences, uh, multiple places that we see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were uh, in, in different portions that they have written about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, ha it was written, the report of the God, uh, how God gave a witness of what he has seen. The, uh, the stone was rolled away and he did not see the body of uh, Jesus in the grave. And we also see in Mark the resurrection and Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. We see uh, Mary Magdalene going there in the early morning and we see her um, testimony of what she has seen. And we also see that <coughs> the resurrection and also in Luke we see that on the road to Emmaus he was uh, visible to two of his disciples and we see what has happened there. And it, it was a witness of each and every um, different person that we see and their testimony of what they have witnessed and what they have seen 
is what we see in all these scripture portions. If you go to the next slide, we see in uh, book of Acts, book of Acts, there is this proclamation of the resurrection of Christ. Apostles were preaching based on this resurrection because they were preaching this uh, king who is seated on the high, who is exalted, God who has raised him up from the dead. He has exalted him, made him to be uh, sitting on the right hand of God. And we see this God and they are proclaiming to worship him, to adore this God, this God who is a sovereign God, who has all the power to reign. And we see also in Revelation uh, that it, it talks about the risen king who would reign the world and who would come again and take his children. He is the one who has the power and he would be the one who would make the enemies his footstool. Revelation uh, in multiple places, it, it reveals about how this resurrected um, uh, Christ would be coming and ruling over uh, the world and also take his children who believed in him. And after that, we'll look at the nature of Christ's resurrection. In the multiple portions that we see, uh, that what is the evidence that we see that he was physically present is what we see. There, there could be evidences saying that, okay, Maybe they saw uh, him, but he's not a physical person. But we see in multiple occasions in these uh, portions of scripture that we see uh, in John 20, 26. We'll turn our Bibles to uh, that portion. John 20, 26. If somebody has it, they can read. Thank you, sister. We see that uh, this particular portion, if you see, that the doors were locked and we see that Jesus came in. So when you look, when you hear this verse or you... Uh, just read this, it has, we sh are tend to assume that it is that it's not a physical person that have come into that room. And this is not the only time that we see, we see in a couple of other places that we see that uh, Jesus disappeared from there and we see other portions that he came, uh, appeared there is what we see. But this is uh, not just happened, we see that in uh, Acts chapter 15 verses 17 through 23. We'll read that uh, portion also. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 17 to 23. If somebody has it, can read those verses. So we see that even, thank you brother, we see that even though they are locked in the prison, we see that they came out and the next day we see the soldiers uh, there uh, confirming that the doors were still locked. So the doors were still locked but the uh, prisoners inside, they were able to come out and they were preaching outside. How did that happen? They were, these were normal physical people's uh, on a day-to-day -day life, they were put in prison, and then we see that they were uh, they came out. It is the angel of God who has carried them out. Is what we see in a, another portion that um, has taken them out. So it is not unnatural f uh, for the power of God to be able to bring them out like that. If that has happened, we would know that Jesus Christ he could come inside even though he's physical and. We also see in other portion that uh, in, in Luke chapter 24, uh, 42 uh, to 43, we see that portion where disciples, uh, Jesus has asked 
disciples to give him something to eat. And we also read that he has, uh, has eaten a broiled fish is what we see that uh, he has eaten. And we also see repeatedly, he, he's, it's not only the f one time that he has appeared unto these disciples. We see in multiple portions that he has appeared to them <coughs> in different uh, locations. And they, he has broken bread with them. He had made breakfast for them, is what we see. There are multiple things that he has done. It's not one time. So if it was one time, then we could, uh, we could have a doubt that maybe the people who are saying it might not uh, be in the right senses that they were thinking they might be uh, because Jesus told them that he will appear that he might have they might be thinking about it but we see that he has appeared with them and has been with them multiple times more than once and few times is what we see that is because he did not want to mislead them um, in saying that he is just the spirit he, he, were, he wanted them to believe that he is in, f in person, in, physic in physical uh, body, he was there. In other scripture portions, we also read that he has uh, uh, some, somebody, I think, um, they caught hold of his feet is what we read. And also we, uh, we see that um, Tom, Thomas was able to put his finger uh, in the nail pierced hands and we see all these things that they have done just to make sure that he's physically there and also Jesus we see that he was able to reveal himself to them multiple times not to mislead that uh, that he's a spirit but he wants to make sure that they understand that when they also will be uh, resurrected then when he comes back and takes them it will be the physical body that they would be in it's not a uh, spirit that they would be in but it is a physical body just like how Christ got the physical body in all the power that God has raised him up and given the physical body which is imperishable which is the one that we look forward to is what he wanted to say and this also brings forth a bigger uh, uh, bigger uh, solution to one of the thing or a bigger question about Genesis 133 where it, it God says that when God made um, man and then he sees man and he says it, it was very good if somebody has that verse we'll read uh, Gen sorry, Genesis 131 thank you sister so we see that God mentioned that it is all very good. Even after making the man, he says it was very good. His body, even though it would be decaying, it would be going through all the pain, aging, it would become old, it will, uh, at some point, it, it will, uh, the person will die. But we see that God says that it is all good. It is very good is what he says. That also makes a point that when God created something, it, it ought to be good because he brings back the same body back to life. The, the best of what we have uh, is what we can say. There are instances where we studied in college, we write exams, we see that sometimes we write exams in March and also in September and there is an option that they say that they will take best of the both. You write in March, you might get 98. Some people still are greedy. They want to get 99 and 100. So they want to write the exam again to make sure that they, they want to get little more is what they want to do. And what happens there is they will take the best of uh, the both. And in many uh, circumstances, we also look for if there are things are uh, open to us and we want to take, we want to take the best of what is available out there. And here we see that when our bodies, just like Christ was resurrected, when he got the physical body, and we also see that when th there, were, there were instances when we see that Mary Magdalene was not able to recognize uh, the risen Savior is what we see. There, there were, um, there, there were the, in Luke, I think he mentions, 
about Mary Magdalene went there when it was still dark is what it mentions that she was not able to see properly but I think later once um, once Jesus talks to her she will uh, she will see that it was Christ and we also see that uh, even the disciples, uh, when they were uh, going to Amos, we see that they were not able to uh, recognize because their eyes were blinded. And in other places also we see that um, disciples who were with Jesus for years together, they were not able to recognize him because he, um, when he was going through all that um, suffering on the cross and all through those days, his body might have become weak, he was not given food, he might have been, his face have been disfigured. All those things would have happened to Christ. But I think when he was resurrected, he got the glorious body, that which was the best of what uh, he had, is what we see. And just like that, when we also, when we, uh, when Jesus comes back and takes us, when we are resurrected, when we are lifted up, when we get these uh, glorious body. That's what. That's how we expect our bodies to be. The best of what we had in our lives. The physical body. Um, we might want to be. Some people would want to be in twenties. All the, uh, they think that they were looking better. They were doing well. They're physically strong when they are in twenties. Some people think they are thirties. <coughs> Once you come to sixties and seventies, anything before that seems very strong to people. But as we look at this, as uh, the, the Bible says, that our bodies would be transformed. It would be regenerated. We'll go to the next slide as we see that we'll, we'll look at one uh, scripture portion, Acts chapter 2 verse 24, to see how God would regenerate uh, our bodies. Acts chapter 2 verse 24. If somebody has that verse, can read Um, if somebody can read one one more verse, First Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Own power. So we see that the same power that was used that was. Uh, that has raised Christ up from the uh, from the uh, dead is the same power that we also will be getting an opportunity to be raised up from. So that is the power that will be in us also. We we see that the way our bodies will also be regenerated. Why why is this regeneration important to us? Because the regeneration of our lives, our bodies, are needed because that would bring us to a place where we could commune with the Father who is holy, who has the power, who has that, uh, we can have fellowship with that Father. If we are not regenerated, then we will not be able to commune with the Father who is holy and who is powerful. And we also see that our justification is also, um, in Romans 4.25, uh, 4.25, we'll also read that verse, Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Thank you, sister. So we see that um, that Christ has been raised up for our justification is what we see. So we are justified because of what Christ has done on the cross that we believe in. And <coughs> we are justified because God has accepted what Christ has done on the cross. If Christ has only paid part of the sin uh, for the part of the sins that we have committed and part of the things uh, transgressions that we have done then what God would have done is not fully accepted what Christ has done but we see that God has accepted the work of uh, work on the cross fully that he knows that all our iniquities all our transgressions all our sins have been uh, accounted for. That's what we see in the work of the cross. We see that 
we have been justified through the resurrection because because he knows that there is no more uh, penalty that needs to be paid because of what Christ has gone through that we are justified now then everything is new and that's when he has raised him up from the dead and has given him a glorious body and we also see in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 if somebody has it can read Thank you, sister. So we see that we should be always willing to work towards the kingdom, uh, extension of his kingdom for the Lord. We, we see that that's what Paul uh, reminds the people um, of Corinth about that. And we also see that all that we believe in, if Christ was not raised from the dead, then all that we believe would be in futile. What all we are doing right now, what are we uh, believe in all that we do, uh, uh, worshipping the Lord, w w we praise God, we thank God, we, ha we come every Sunday morning and evening, we pray to Him every um, day. What, what, what do we get out of all these things, right? So all our efforts, whatever we do for Christ, are not going to be in vain is what uh, Paul reminds us, that because we see what He has done in Christ Jesus when Christ uh, was dead, he was buried, he has risen him up from the, uh, from the dead and we see that he has given him a body which is imperishable. That is what we look forward to. He would do the, he used the same power to raise you up and me. If we are, if we are no more in this world, we are dead, we, that would be the same thing that would happen to us. And if we are still alive when Christ comes back, that, that's what would happen, that we would attain that uh, body with all the power that God has, that the exact same power that God has used to raise Jesus up would be the one that would also lift us up and make us union with Christ and we would be the one who would be dwelling in glory with Him. And we also see that, <coughs> in the next slide we see, that Jesus has been given this glorious body. It is not as we been referencing all these uh, slides and um, uh, initial places that we have seen that the, f uh, the human beings, how they have reacted, how they would be uh, again aging and uh, will be dead. And we also see in the scripture portions where many of uh, uh, the people were raised from the dead even after they were dead, they were raised. But we see that there is a different uh, uh, difference between what they all have gone through and what uh, the Christ uh, has received as part of the resurrection that we see. It is the glorious body that he has received. We read that in Romans chapter 8 verse 23 and 24. Romans chapter 8 verses 23 and 24. Thank you, sister. We see here what Paul is uh, reiterating that Jesus is the first fruit of what we are going to see. He, 829 brother. Okay, thank you brother. Thank you, sister. We see that um, he is the first fruit. He, just like him, we also will be following him. If we have seen, and we have see, we have seen that how disciples were amazed at the power that he got. Disciples were amazed at the power that God has put in him, and people uh, disciples were not even able to recognize the glorious body that Jesus Christ got. 
and that would be the same kind of body that would be getting the glorious body that god would give each one of us that we look forward to just like first fruits like jesus is the first fruit and then we would be the one who would be following then we we see in other scripture portions also that they refer in the terms of agriculture where the first fruits would always be followed by the similar ones that would be followed so that we see here that jesus is the first fruit of the resurrection that we see that all that we read about all the amazing thing that god has done the regenerated work the resurrection work all that has been put in and it's it has been prophesied it doesn't it did not happen randomly we see that it has been always the Uh, uh, prophesied by the prophets and also been written in multiple portions in scriptures how god would raise um christ from the depths and also we see that the power that would be residing in them and then we see that we as believers in christ we have this hope just like the verses that we have read that that is the hope that we look forward to that we uh, look unto that all our uh, faith will not go in vain because we also will get the same kind of body that we are looking at the glorious body which is which has the same power which is imperishable that we would be able to enjoy the fellowship with the father which which would be will be in the glory with him and we also look at uh, one uh, couple of last verses um first corinthians chapter 15 verse 2 um oh no sorry Yes, in Romans eight twenty three to twenty four, we'll read twenty three and twenty four. Romans eight twenty three twenty four. thank you sister so we see, disciples have seen we have seen all the evidence of how uh, the apostles who have seen and disciples who have seen how reflected upon and what uh, paul was also looking forward to he was looking forward to that glorious body that all that uh, he could get because he also mentions in multiple uh, places that it is better for him to uh, leave the body and be in the spirit with be with uh, uh, christ is what he mentions he looks forward to that because we as christians we know that it is <coughs> as each passing day how uh, how hard it is uh, to fight the the schemes of the devil we we desire that we want to be strong we want to be in the lord we want to uh, show obedience but we know that it is hard but we as paul also mentions that he also desires that he leaves the body and he wants to be with christ that's that's what he looks forward to and as we look at at this uh, uh at this uh topic this evening uh that as a church what we believe in or uh, uh, we are we are looking at uh, these uh portions of uh, the statements of faith of each and every thing that uh, we were looking at and um, we've been asked uh, where we um in the uh, uh, people who are teaching the brothers who are teaching we've been asked not to go into another area it is very hard not to skip into another area because we know that it is all interrelated you cannot talk about the father and leave out son and the uh, holy spirit you cannot talk about uh, redemption uh, yeah. uh you you can talk about redemption but we can we can, uh, if you cannot skip uh, resurrection we cannot um talk about the work on the cross there are so many things that we could talk about but the main uh, thing that uh, i wanted uh, all of us to understand this evening and uh, reiterate the same thing that the statement of faith as all that uh, uh, is on uh, the the uh, website and the what the church elders were put together is the word of god that we see that what we believe in as a resurrection what uh, we uh, as the scripture portion says that we also look forward to the same glorious body that that we believe that it was the physical body that it was given 
to Christ. It was literal and physical body that it was given to Christ that um, by the accepting the atonement that Christ has done, God has accepted, completely accepted the atoning work that was done on the cross. That's what we believe in. We believe that all the work that Christ has done on the cross, um, he has paid for each and every sin of ours. We also see in, um, uh, um, in uh, multiple portions uh, that Christ has paid and he has separated uh, our sins from east to west and multiple ways that he says that he will not remember that anymore. That is what we look forward to. But when we have come to Christ, when we accepted Christ as our uh, Savior, we know that we've been, um, we've been baptized into death and we have been raised. We know that our uh, physical bodies would be the same. Our uh, bodies are still uh, prone to temptations. Our bodies, the physical bodies are still um, prone to uh, deviate from what God's word is saying. But what God was expecting when we came to him was the, our internal, our, our soul that we have to be aligned to what God wants us to be. We have to desire that we are in union with Christ. But when we, have, when we attain this glorious body, uh, when um, Christ comes back, that's when we would be having the same mind, same body, which would have, uh, which the body will not be under any subjection. As just like Christ had, once he was raised from the dead, he has conquered death, he has conquered the power of sin and also the presence of sin. He, he had victory over all those things and we believe that it would be the same for you and me also. Once we are resurrected, when we um, attain that uh, body, we also will have the same power that Christ had, that we will not be anymore in the presence of sin and we will uh, have the victory over the power of sin. We'll take these few thoughts this evening and uh, submit these words uh, in prayer. My heavenly loving, gracious and mighty Father, thank you and I praise you for the time that you have uh, given us this evening. As your children, Lord, you have been gracious unto us. Lord, you've been uh, merciful unto us. Lord, men, not many in this world are able to see this day not many in this world are able to be found in your presence. Lord, we see darkness all around. We see confusion all around. Lord, but you have set us apart and you have given us these times, Lord, to reflect upon what you have done in our lives and what we believe in and the word of God that has been given to us and Lord as an example what you have done Lord and the ways that you have shown us we thank you and we praise you for the word and the scripture portions that we were able to read and the, and the things that you have reminded us again Lord that we are the privileged people that you have thought about us, you have seen our helplessness, you have sent your son Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross, that gruesome death, going through all that persecution, that mockery, all that he has to go through, Lord, with all that pain, only looking at us, Lord, how helpless that we are, that we were not able to help ourselves and we will not be able to help ourselves. Lord, thank you and I praise you, Lord, for knowing the humans, Lord, that we in our own standing would never be able to come close to you. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for the work of resurrection, the work of regeneration, that you have done and thank you for redeeming each one of us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the way that you have put forward and being the first fruit, Lord, and giving us the hope 
that all our life and what we believe in will not go in vain but we would attain those glorious bodies lord and the power that will be within us and the spirit that indwells in us lord also helps us even now lord to be in union with you or but our bodies lord are weak in our own strength lord will not be able to stand but it is your grace that you are sustaining each one of us lord to be able to look unto you to be able to be built up in you and in your word and lord as paul says that we also lord look forward in hope for the day that we will be taken up and will be in your presence lord we thank you and we praise you for the blessed hope that we have in you lord we submit these things that we have listened lord we pray that you work in our hearts and help us lord to be built up in faith and lord to trust in you completely and show obedience to the word that you have lord given to us lord we thank you and we praise you we ask all these in jesus precious name amen, amen. and now may the grace of our lord and our savior jesus the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us even now and for evermore amen